and welcome back to the middle school class of Christ Tabernacle Apostolic Church Christian Education Program. My name is Minister Carthia Moore Jenkins, also known as Minister Didi. I'm so glad to have you back with me on today. I hope all is well with you and let's get into the Word of God. We are in the second lesson of this series where we are studying Moses. And this particular lesson is entitled Exiled from Prince Tech Outcast. Last lesson was um, that he was saved and he went from being condemned to being a prince. And so let's take a look at the unit aim. The unit aim says, just as Moses was called out of Egypt to become a patriarch of the faith, we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to become sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. And that's referenced by um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Let's take a look at the Bible point, which says, just as Moses embraced his identity as a Hebrew, even though he was treated like an outcast and no longer welcome in Egypt, we must let go of the world to become more like Jesus. And let's move on to our focus scriptures for this particular lesson, starting with Exodus chapter two, verses 11 through 15. I hope you have your Bibles or your cell phones on hand, but if not, let's go read. You can read along with me on the screen. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out into his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smites thou they, thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intended thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Let's go on to Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. Um, this is a continuation of the previous scripture. Verse 15 says, Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. And on to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. By faith, Moses, by, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. And then 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. So I want you to take a look at these questions that we have on the screen. What do you think it was like for Moses growing up as an Egyptian? something to think about, right? How difficult do you think it was for Moses to watch his own people suffer and why? And do you think the Hebrews liked Moses before he was kicked out of Egypt? Why or why not? And why do you think Moses finally decided to defend his people? These are just a few questions I want you to think about while we go over this lesson. Um, it's very interesting that as a Hebrew baby, he, um, in his later years after age five, which we're about to get into, he returned to the palace and we see, um, his life growing up as an adult, as you read through the story and how he eventually just re recognizes that he no longer belongs in the palace. So we're going to get to that. So let's take a look at, um, 
what happened to Moses very briefly um, before. Um, let's um, just do a quick review of last week. Excuse me. So we learned last week that the church is, go um, is God's called out people. The church is a group of people called out of darkness into his marvelous light. And you can go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to take a look at that scripture. We see a representation of that being called out when we examine the life of Moses as he led God's people out of Egypt. Through each phase of Moses' life, we see practical applications for our own journey as well. We see Moses grow from being condemned, which, you know, Pharaoh condemned all two year babies, two years old and under male children to be placed into the water and drowned in the, into the Nile River. He goes from being condemned to being a prince in Pharaoh's house. He goes from being a prince to being an outcast, which is what we are going to um, take a look at in this particular lesson. And then another phase of his life, he goes from being an outcast to being a prophet, the one who was chosen to bring the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt um, to the promised land. And then from he goes from being a prophet to being a patriarch of the faith. So let's take a look at some of the history. We learned that Moses was born under Pharaoh's, um, Pharaoh's time, who ordered the murder of all of Hebrew male children under two years old. Um, Moses' mother placed him in the river to protect him and to keep him safe, um, to save his life. Um, and he was found by Pharaoh's daughter, Bithia, who claimed him as her own son and um, raised him as an Egyptian, even though she clearly knew that he was an Egyptian child because of the blanket that was found in his, um, in the basket or the ark that he was in when he was found in the, in the water. We are spiritually doomed to death, just like Moses was. He was doomed to die in the Nile River. But we are spiritually doomed to die a life um, because of sin. And however, if we choose to be born again through repentance, through water baptism in Jesus' name and spiritual baptism, we can go from being slaves to sin and to being sons and daughters of God. Amen. That is our just destiny if we so choose. So let's go back to Moses and looking at his early years. So. Hebrew homeschooling. After Moses was um, drawn out of the Nile River, Pharaoh's daughter gave him uh, a name. She named him Moses. However, she then gave him back to his family because he needed to be nursed. He needed to be bre breastfed at that particular time. And um, someone put said, um, put them, made themselves available to say they know a woman who would be able to breastfeed the baby um, because Bithia, the mother, Pharaoh's daughter, didn't have a baby, so she didn't have the ability to breastfeed this newborn baby that she had. And so she sent him to be nursed by his very own biological mother. And what we know from reading in the Bible that um, he was there until he was about five years old. That's he stayed with his biological family until he was about five years old and then returned to the palace. What we know um, from studying the Bible is that um, many children before the age of five, they learn family values. They learn our family believes in reading a lot or playing basketball or our family believes in going to church. They learn many different values um, in our family. We, we use our manners. Some kids learn uh, their family values is, is cussing and swearing and fighting. There are many different things that children children learn, but many most of that is learned before they are even five years old. They learn the difference between right and wrong, right? They learn about um, social dynamics. They learn about please and thank you. They learn about sharing and taking turns. Um, they learn about being, uh, being a child versus being an adult, what it means to be a, a, a teenager. They learn, um, you know, the, the, um, 
their relatives, their connections, who's their mom, who's their dad, their grandparents, who um, their godparents are, uh, as well as cousins and other people in the community. They also learn, learn uh, moral responsibility and much, 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 much more. So all of this um, shaped Moses, all of this information that he got from being in um, with his biological family up until age five, he got all of that just before he went to um, permanently live in the palace. In the palace. He, um, he learned all of that in the Hebrew home environment, not in Egyptian schools, but in his Hebrew home. He would have heard faithfully every day the commands of Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through five, which says that the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Moses was trained to know and love the true God of his Hebrew people. Amen. Once he went back to the palace around five years old, um, that's when he began to get his Egyptian uh, education. Upon leaving his birth family, he entered into the palace. He learned in Egyptian schools. He studied Egyptian philosophy. He wore Egyptian clothing. He lived an Egyptian life. But deep down inside, Moses was not an Egyptian. He spent a portion of his life walking, living, talking like an Egyptian, but it was just a mask that hid his true nature. Below the surface, something was brewing and all the training that Egypt would provide him was uprooted um, and it was uprooted by what actually dwelled inside him, which was who he was as a Hebrew and what he knew and understood from a very young age about serving and loving and worshiping the true and living God. A defining decision. Moses had grown up with an understanding that his people were enslaved. Perhaps he was always aware of the cruelty and had a front row seat to it, but he had never chosen to act on it. And it makes me wonder why. But eventually something rolls to the surface and he could no longer sit by and quietly sit by quietly while his people were being abused. Moses evaluated the situation and took action by killing an Egyptian who was being beaten by he, um, who was being bit, beaten by an Egyptian soldier. And he took the body of the Egyptian soldier and buried him in the sand. Some time later, Moses came across two Hebrew men who were arguing. Um, Moses intervened in that particular argument, and he was shocked when one of the men said, do you intend to kill me just as you killed the Egyptian? And Moses was shocked because he had no idea that other people knew that he had killed the Egyptian, that he was the one who was responsible. Moses realized there was no hiding his actions. He could never go back to the way things were because he had taken a stand for the Hebrew people. He could never fit in at Pharaoh's palace again. And this is where we learn that Moses does take a stand. He does make a decision and he realizes that it's time for him to go. He learns that it is time for him to be on the move. So at this point, there is a personal exodus. An exodus means to go out or an exit of something. And the book of Exodus is appropriately named, not just because of Israel's exodus out of Egypt, but because of Moses' personal exodus out of Egypt as well. He had to take flight. He had to move. He had to run because he knew that Pharaoh would be looking for him as a result of him killing an Egyptian soldier. And I just want to shift just a little bit, just to talk a little bit, altering our worldview. We must embrace the Bible as the fundamental root of our worldview, just as um, Moses's 
fundamental worldview was through the eyes of what he had been taught as a young child about loving God, about living for God, about worshiping the true and the living God. Our world changes over time and our culture shifts, but the word of God is settled as it said in Psalm chapter 119, verse 89, his word is settled. It doesn't change. It um, it doesn't ebb and flow like our culture. You know, some things are, are, are trending and certain things are out in the forefront and popular. And then those things shift and something else comes forward. The word of God is not like that. It stays the same. It's always the same and it will always be the same. We must be careful to approach scripture correctly rather than viewing scripture by the lens of our culture. Um, often we take, um, we take our cues from the world around us to help us understand what scripture says. For example, the Bible tells us in the 10 commandments, honor your father and your mother. And it goes on to say that your days may be long upon the earth. That's Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. However, in, um, our worldly view, particularly in American culture, um, our, our culture says, um, you know, that. Are, are basically children and, and parents are on equal footing. Like there is some equal voice um, in the household with regards to parents and children. However, the word of God teaches us, we all, we have to honor our parents, not just because, um, uh, because when we think that they're right, however, we are to honor our parents even when we know that they may be wrong. We are still supposed to respect them. We should never ri rise up against them to hurt them or to harm them. Um, we are to honor them in everything that we do, and that means showing our respect to them. It's really important that we take a look at our worldview, and as you can see, Moses did that. He took a look at the way things were being done um, in Egypt, and he understood understood that the way that the children of Israel were being um, enslaved and the way that they were being treated was not the will of God. And he had to make a decision. He made that decision and he acted on it and he knew that he had to get out of Dodge and run for his life because Pharaoh would be after him. So in closing, um, I want you to make sure that you go back and take a look at um, these scriptures, um, ponder them and think about them and see how they how they um, line up with your own life. Um, our walk in this journey as Christians should alter our character. Um, our walk with God is not just a mental, physical and emotional walk. It's a spiritual walk as well. And in fact, um, it's primarily a spiritual walk because of our spiritual lives are foundational to the rest of our lives, just like what Moses had been taught as his foundation um, for the rest of his life. We can dress the outside, but Christianity calls for change at our character level. We cannot submit our character to God without prayer, and prayer is extremely important in terms of being able to help us to change the way that we are living our lives, to line up to live a life of obedience and a life that honors God and everything that we do and honoring him with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and all of our being. So I appreciate you being with me on today. In closing, I want you to take a look at um, the activity that I have for you. Um, the supplies that you will need would be a poster board or simply a large piece of paper and some markers. And all I want you to do is draw a picture of what you would consider to be the model Christian. To the best of your ability, draw what someone would look like who fully embraced the word of God. Email your drawing to info at ctacma.org. Again, info at ctacma.org. Write CE or Christian education slash middle school class and the subject line. I'd love to see your work. God bless you and thank you for being with me today.